Okay, so osteoporosis is a common condition which affects one in three women and one in five men over the age of 55. It's a slowly pro progressive condition. The risk factors in older people are the same as in younger individuals. For women, the risk factors are early menopause, the number of pregnancies, and whether they breastfeed their babies. With early menopause, there is a reduction in the estrogen, which is essential for healthy bones. During pregnancy and breastfeeding, there is an increase in the amount of calcium required for the baby's bones and for the milk. If your diet is during pregnancy and breastfeeding does not contain sufficient calcium, then the calcium will be removed from your bone and thus lead to thinning of your bones. Increasingly, as treatment for breast cancer become more successful, we are seeing survivors with osteoporosis. This is because chemotherapy will stop estrogen production, leading to a premature menopause. Furthermore, drugs such as anastrozole and letrozole, given to prevent recurrence of breast cancer, increase the risk of osteoporosis. In men, it is important to ensure they have sufficient circulating testosterone. For men with prostate cancer, the drugs used for treatment block testosterone production and increase the risk of osteoporosis. In both men and women, physical inactivity not only leads to loss of muscle mass, but also to osteoporosis. So osteoporosis may be one of a number of conditions present in an older person. The expertise of a geriatrician is to be able to evaluate all the conditions which an older person may have, and then to create a management plan which addresses the problem and take into account the wishes of the wishes and expectations of the patient. Many patients may not recognize that they have osteoporosis until they have a fracture as a result of a minor injury. Often there is loss of height, which may not have been recognized by the patient, but this is because of fractures in their backbones. If a patient has a CT or an MRI scan for any reason, then these may show evidence of a fracture within the spine or other bones. And X-ray doctors are now encouraged to report these incidental fractures so that appropriate further investigations and management can be instigated. Frequently, older people may have relatives, mothers or siblings with a history of fractures, and this would be a red flag for further investigation. We normally use a DEXA scan to assess both the presence of osteoporosis and its severity. In addition to the DEXA scan, it is important to do a variety of blood tests to exclude other causes which may increase the risk of fracture. A DEXA scan may not always be needed if there is a clear history of a fracture as a result of a minor injury, particularly in people over the age of 75. So the risk of developing osteoporosis as you age can be mitigated by ensuring you have a healthy diet, which includes around 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium daily, as well as maintaining physical act activity and engaging in both weight bearing and resistance exercises. It is important that you have adequate exposure to sunlight in the summer months. I generally advise my patients that they expose their arms and face to sunlight without sun cream for 10 to 15 minutes or until their arm and face feel hot, then put, the, put on the sun cream as even the lowest sun protection factor will stop your skin from making vitamin D. You may wish to consider taking vitamin D supplements in the winter months. If you're a smoker, it is important to stop as not only does it increase your risk of heart disease and stroke, but also osteoporosis. You should also ensure that your alcohol intake is within the current guidance and preferably lower as it increases the risk of osteoporosis and the alcohol can result in unsteadiness and falls, which may result in the fracture. So as I've already mentioned about the skill of a geriatrician is to be able to assess patients with multiple symptoms and 
ensure that the treatments do not interact and cause side effects which can be serious. It is therefore essential that your clinician is aware of all your medications and conditions so that appropriate treatment of osteoporosis can be commenced. Like all medical, medical treatments, treatments used for osteoporosis have short and long-term side effects. It is important to tailor the treatment that is most appropriate for you. Until recently, the treatment options were fairly limited, with most people being only eligible for what we call bone sparing agents, which are also known as anti-resorptives. There was one drug which made new bone, known as an anabolic agent, and its use was restricted in the United Kingdom for people with very severe disease. In the past year, we have another anabolic agent which is available for people with high risk of fracture and can be used um, without the restrictions made on the other drug which has been available for some time. So your bones are living tissue and the treatments tend to affect the way in which the bone cells work and interact. As bone is a slow-growing tissue, the effects of treatment may not be seen for 10, 6 to 12 months after treatment is commenced. It is therefore important that the treatment is taken as per the advice of your doctor and according to the schedule recommended. There are blood and urine tests which can be done to see if a person is taking the medication and whether it is having a required effect. However, most of these are currently used mainly for research purposes. If the medication you have been prescribed is not suiting you, then it is important to discuss this with your GP or specialist and not simply stop taking the medication.